Hi guys. Try something a little bit different today. Uh, basically, I'm going to talk about one of sci-fi's most iconic weapons, the Armet Military Systems M41A Pulse Rifle, which of course made its debut in the Alien sequel directed by James Cameron, Aliens. This is a 10mm pulse-action air-cooled automatic assault rifle, which was used as the basic rifle of the US Colonial Marine Corps, which of course we see featured in the film, and the US Army. This is a standard service variant and has an over and under configuration incorporating a 30mm pump-action grenade launcher, which we see primarily used in the Aliens film. The design of the rifle is lightweight and rugged. The M41 is constructed largely from ultra-light alloy precision metal stampings. The outer casing is made from a titanium aluminium alloy and many of the internal parts are moulded from high impact temperature resistant plastics. The layout of the rifle is conventional and a spring loaded retractable stock allows the rifle to be either used in the carbine format when the stock is obviously retracted or as a rifle with the inline stock extended for greater stability while the rifle is being fired from the automatic setting. Sighting is made down a groove in the carrying handle with an adjustable tangent leaf back sight position in the rear slot. A three times power CCD televisional sight can be optionally fitted to the weapon in the carrying handle for greater accuracy at range and under low lighting conditions. The M41 fires the standard US M309 10mm by 24 round. This ammunition comprises of a 13.6 gram projectile embedded with a rectangular caseless propellant block of nitromine 50. The round is steel jacketed and explosive tipped, which means that this round works well against soft targets and light vehicles. The internal ballistic characteristics of this round has been optimised for maximum lethality against infantry wearing personal armour. The round is designed to penetrate the armour, exploding just after impact in order to inflict lethal internal damage. The M41 ammunition clip will hold up to 99 of these explosive tipped rounds using a U-bend conveyor which feeds the rounds mechanically into the rotating breech mechanism. However, the clip is usually only filled to 95% capacity in order to reduce the autoloader's tendency to jam. The M41 uses electronic pulse action to fire. Controlled directly from the trigger, the internal mechanism including the rotating breech is mounted on free floating rails within a carbon fibre jacket. This assembly is recalled dampened to reduce the effects of the muzzle climb during bursts and full automatic fire. From the thumb selector, the weapon can be set to a selective or a four round burst, or for the full automatic fire, the latter allowing a rate of fire up to the weapon's cyclic rate of 900 RPM. A manual clocking handle situated in the upper receiver allows the operator to clear the breach in the event of a stoppage, or to check the chamber prior to the stowage. An LED display situated just below the receiver indicates the ammo remaining in the clip. This display can be dimmed for night operations, although it has been known for Colonial Marines to tape up the uh, LED display to stop this display being seen by enemies in the field. The underslung 30mm grenade launcher comprises a barrel, a breech, and a four round internal magazine which is charged by hand loading individual grenade cartridges into the mechanism. A pump action is used to load rounds into the breech and cock the firing mechanism. Once loaded the launch is primed to fire from a trigger position just in front of the magazine housing which is used as a hand grip when firing a grenade. The most commonly round used in the grenade launcher is the M40 high explosive fragmentation round which is marked with a red plastic cap. It has a muzzle velocity of 7 to 8 meters per second, an effective range of 400 meters, and an accurate range of around 180 meters. The cartridge has a rimmed separating base and a launch and launches a projectile 
with an explosive element comprised of a notched steel wire wrapped around a filler of composite B-15. When the round explodes, it spreads more than 300 fragments over a casualty radius of 5 metres. The M40 can be deployed as an ad hoc hand grenade by flipping off its plastic cap and twisting the nose cap clockwise. This gives a 5 second delay before the grenade explodes. Care must be taken not to strike or depress the nose cap, otherwise the grenade will go off immediately. Other grenade ammunition includes M38 high explosive armour piercing rounds, which are capable of penetrating 3 centimetres of steel. The round bursts with a casualty radius of 5 metres. This round is marked usually with a green cap. Another round used is the M51A bounding fragmentation round. This blue cap round is not point at detonating like the M40 or 38. When the round impacts, a small charge repels its 2 metres into the air where it air bursts for an additional area of effect against troops in the open or in foxholes without overhead cover. M108 canister buckshot round essentially turns the grenade launcher into a large shotgun which gives the Colonial Marine Rifleman effective firepower for close range engagements. Uncommonly used by the Colonial Marine Corps is the M230 baton round. This fires a low-velocity plastic projectile capable of incapacitating or even disabling an unprotected soft target. Another round is the M60 white phosphorus incendiary round. It contains a filler of white phosphorus which spreads up to 50 metres after impact, creating a rising smoke cloud and flame with a secondary incendiary effect against vegetation and materials. Finally, the M72A1 star shell. Marked with an embossed letter S on the top, the M72A1 is fired 200 metres into the air where it releases a small parachute and ignites, providing illumination with the power of 50,000 candles for the approximate time of 45 seconds. The M41 is a robust weapon, fully sealed against corrosion, dirt and moisture, yet easy to disassemble and maintain. The solid state of electronics are hardened against tree and background radiation and the weapon is perfectly usable in a vacuum environment. However, it is not sufficiently stabilised or recoil dampened for use in free-fall combat operations. Just to go briefly into the background of the M4A1 pulse rifle, the actual design and concepts were originally created by Aliens director James Cameron and were finally realised by head of British movie armourers Simon Atherton. Real life weapons were used in the primary construction of the pulse rifle. These weapons included the M1A1 Thompson submachine gun, a Remington model 870 shotgun and the Spaz 12 for the iconic look of the grenade launcher. Initial plans were to base the M41A on the Heckerman Cock MP5A3. However, this proved problematic when James Cameron wanted to produce large, impressive muzzle flashes, the, and this was not possible with the MP5's 9mm round. As a result, the M1A1 Thompson was adopted as the base weapon, as this used a larger 0.45 ACP round which produced a bigger and more impressive muzzle flash. As a result of the Thompson being used, metal casings could be seen occasionally ejecting from the rifle in the film which is inaccurate as the weapon is supposedly using caseless rounds. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this sort of brief look into some of the iconic weapons. I am planning on doing some more iconic weapons in the future. I'm going to try and stay away from overdone weapons that other people have done really good videos on, such as lightsabers and etc. like that. Um, I want to keep it to those weapons that are kind of neglected but need some exposure because they are decent. Um, iconic weapons and they are from like really really iconic films I mean this is just an experimental video I mean let me know how it is I want to continue with it I don't know if I've done it right or wrong please comment and give me some feedback please